We're here in Seattle at the University of Washington here to check out tiny battery-free sensors that float in the wind, inspired by the humble dandelion. Let's check it out. So if you think about any large open space where you'd want to deploy lots of sensors for precision agriculture applications or temperature sensors to monitor things like forest fires, environment and climate change type scenarios, right? What we've done here is figured out a way to automatically disperse them in the wind inspired by nature. At the Nano Engineering and Sciences Building, we got a glimpse of how these dandelion-inspired windsurfing sensors can be made into unique shapes, fitted with tiny electronics, and dropped from the sky to cover a large area. The process for making these tiny sensors begins with a laser. Kind of inspired by how you have natural variation between individual seeds, we actually have a program that can generate different patterns like this. For example, we can generate different types of fill patterns, different diameters and sizes to vary how fast these things are going to fall. So the different designs will spread out to different distances. An added challenge in designing the shape of these battery-free devices was ensuring that they always land with their solar panels facing up. What we noticed is if you have a completely filled in disk of material like this, right? Similar to how you have some natural seeds uh, like this elm seed or other leaves that you see, what happens is as they fall, they'll repeatedly flip over and you don't know what orientation they're going to land in. By comparison, if you look at dandelion seeds that have the same bristly sort of structure that allows some air to flow through the center, these are always going to fall in the same upright orientation. Kind of like in, in badminton, the badminton shuttlecock will always you know, turn and orient the same way. Once the dandelion shapes have been cut, it's time to add the electronics. Our current prototype has a variety of different sensors that we've tested for measuring things like temperature, humidity, pressure. You can attach what's called an accelerometer. That's the same sort of thing that detects motion in your phone, a magnetometer to detect magnetic fields. One of the cool things we were able to do with that is uh, we can actually detect a car as it's driving by. The core part of the system is something that you can easily adapt to lots of different applications for people who are building new kinds of sensors. When you're building things at this scale, you really have to think about every little bit of weight that you're adding. This is our, our whole circuit, all of our electronics. This is a capacitor. This is buffering up. It's storing up a little bit of energy from our solar cells. So if our solar cells aren't providing enough power continuously, we can charge up just a little bit to be able to take a sensor reading and send it out wirelessly. The next little circuit that we have here, this makes sure that our system can actually start up even when there's very little little energy available and then it will trigger our little microcontroller here, our computing chip, to actually do the operations that we want. The next chip that we have here is a tiny temperature and humidity sensor. We also have a light sensor here. The last chip that we have here, this is a switch, which is what we use for backscatter. And so that's how we're, we're transmitting information from this thing wirelessly. This whole thing weighs, depending on exactly which, which sensors we put, 30 to 50 milligrams. According to Vikram, these dandelion-inspired sensors are small and light enough that a drone could carry 1,000 of them. We headed outside to see how that might work. Using a consumer drone converted into a prototype drop system, we saw how the wind naturally disperses these dandelion-inspired sensors. with the occasional hiccup. Oh, they're falling out. Yeah, they fell out. <laughs> For now, the disks are made of plastic and need to be retrieved by hand, but Vikram and his team are also exploring other options. One thing that I'm really interested in is uh, trying to make these, these kinds of electronic devices uh, more sustainable. Can we build these sorts of systems using biodegradable materials? We could easily make this disk structure out of, say, paper or something like that. Researchers recently put out a paper that describes their progress in trying to build more sustainable electronics, including the building of a functional prototype mouse that they say is 90% biodegradable by mass. But the team behind these dandelion-inspired sensors have more than just sustainability in mind for their next steps. The other thing that we're excited about is right now, these, you know, these devices, they always maintain the same shape as they fall, right? But what if we could change them? As they're falling, can we, um, you know, can we modulate the shape and control where it's going to land? 
This will also be a really interesting capability and it has lots of new engineering challenges as, as well, where um, beyond just the sensing component, we also have to add some kind of actuator that can, you know, that can actively change the shape as it's moving. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll put links to all the studies we mentioned down in the comments below. If you want to see more What the Future videos, check out this playlist right here. Subscribe to CNET for more tech news and see you on the next one.